Try it again. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to use an air hammer with a point. here is our crankshaft this is our 3, uh, 394 XP um, we have the crankshaft that we have slipped into the bearing this is the, the drive side and we have a piece of 3 quarter inch pipe that we have cut at 1 and 7 16 that's 1 inch and 7 16 we're going to slip this over the top here we're going to take a washer, put it over the top. Now this, this clutch is reverse thread or left hand thread. So we're going to put it on. And once it's tight, we're going to have to make sure that the connecting rod is always up and we're just going to spin this side and hold the crank, get a glove on, hold the, the crankshaft and you should be able just to put it on and if you got a Gorilla Grip you should be able to put that all the way through About a quarter inch or so left to go. We're gonna pull this into the bearing all the way. Can you get inside of here? Why? Um, put this down real quick. Grab this flashlight. We're gonna pull this all the way to the markings on the inside. Can you get inside there and look at that? Yep. All the way into the crank. Okay, we can like, show it on this side here. Right in here? Yeah, let's show here the markings. Right in here, in that. Yeah, in that slot. Yeah. There's okay. about a quarter. Turn it a little bit. This okay. way. There's a there's there's a coloration. Right there. Difference between the machined steel and the, the color difference is about the color of this rod here. 
versus the, the shininess, shininess of the steel. So we're going to pull it in until till they line up just by doing the same thing. slide past anymore. Nope. Okay. Now we'll take this off by turning the, ra the ratchet to the on position and simply loosening. Is there a heat up? We only heat it to install the bearing. And we have a connected crankshaft to case without a $56 tool. All right, so this is a 394 case. This is my old case. That is a 3.6 millimeter hole with a steel, with a steel uh, tube, dowel, pin, whatever, push through it. It comes out the back here where this piece of melted tube was at one time affixed to this piece of pipe and it was curved up to the top. That's, that's what we want to, uh, that's what I want to emphasize here is that, that that piece of tubing, you don't want this tubing down or over like this or down. You want it straight up and a little bit of a curve to the top of that fuel tank. So when you, so when you're looking at it from inside this hole, you want it up in this corner which is going to be this corner right here. That's where it's going to sit on the inside. Right up in there. That's where you want that. And you had the, and, and this this tube, the new tube, which I'm going to show here, comes with this is a completely different setup and it's going to kind of kind of it, I couldn't find anything on it online. I couldn't find anything on it from the dealer um, that my dealers were just a bunch of morons. I'm not going to mention much more than that. But uh, Turn it. Uh, after about a month and me going down to the, the saw shop and tearing apart one of their 395 XPs, we found that they replaced that steel dowel with a smaller, stubbier steel dowel that is pressed into a piece of plastic. And now I have this shoved into, into my 5.1 millimeter hole, which is the oil vent hole. I have my tube facing a little bit off this way and up. So now what I'm gonna do is take a punch. And a block. Wood block. Pretty dirty work. Make sure you have plenty of brake clean to assist when you're done. So, but basically, what I'm going to do here is line that pin up on the uh, punch up on that pin using a ball pin hammer. I'm going to push. You getting that, Corbin? I zoomed in too far. Okay, back out a little bit. Uh, it's out. Okay, we're out. Yep. So basically, I'm going to push this this piece of uh, from what I saw in that 395 XP in the in the shop. Um, you want the piece of poly pipe flush with the bottom of the countersunk hole. So we'll put this back.
and I'm going to finish pounding about another millimeter or two. Until that hole, or excuse me, until that piece of poly tube is about flush and the vent tube is going to stick out approximately <coughs> maybe a half a millimeter. Well, now that we have this flush, we want to install the other side. But first, we're going to have to install a gasket onto this side. And we're going to use some. Uh, the Husqvarna recommends grease. According to their workshop manual, they recommend greasing the gasket before installation. Okay, we're going to use some. Permatex Ultra Black, that's what it's called. Alright, so somewhere in here we have a crankcase gasket, which, God, I hope these freaking morons ordered me the right one. The first thing I'm going to do is fit this gasket on here, making sure that all the holes line up, making sure nothing protrudes too far into the crankcase. Looks good, lines up. Next thing we're going to do is silicone, we'll use some Permatex, uh, silicone gasket maker. And I'm going to apply a very thin layer around this thing, this whole thing here. 